Well, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to this edition of Spotlight on Music. I'm your host, Bishop Andre Woods, and we got a blessed time uh, prepared for you tonight. A wonderful friend of mine in gospel music. Uh, we're going to be talking to the one and only Jerome L. Farrell in just a moment. What I want you to do is like and share, start your own watch parties, and get ready to join us for this all-important conversation that we're going to have with this great man of God tonight. Listen, you got time to tag friends and uh, chime in. I invite you to join in the comment section with your comments. If you have questions, uh, certainly put them in the comment section. Let us know you're there and greet us tonight uh, in the comment section. We're on the Fellowship of Music and Arts page, Bishop Andre S. Woods page. We're spread all around, so we want you to join us tonight in this conversation. It is my joy and my privilege to welcome to this platform tonight as we talk about music and certainly one who does it so well and we just appreciate his contribution to gospel music as a whole. I want to help uh, help me welcome to this platform tonight the one and only Dr. Jerome L. Farrell. How you doing my friend? God bless you Bishop. I'm doing wonderful. Oh man, it's a blessing to have you on with us live tonight. We know we had some technical difficulties last night, but we found the problem. We got it solved. Thank you, Jesus. And we're happy that you were able to come back and to share. Listen, man, I don't want to hold up a moment of this all-important dialogue. I want you to um, just let the people know where you are and how you got started. Uh, with your music ministry, take us all the way back and bring us all the way uh, up to date. Uh, you got the mic, Doc. Well, thank God for you, um, Bishop Woods. I um, I started directing the choir when I was I was in nine years old, but um, fast forward. Um, my notoriety came nationally when I, after I formed the, the Lighthouse Interdenominational Choir out of Buffalo, New York. And um, we recorded with no other than like, the Armory Palladium, the Sound of Gospel record label. And uh, we first did a first independent project uh, in 1982. And um, which I, I'm glad to say that that project is being re-released in another month or so, the original Lighthouse Choir. And, um, but we recorded uh, April 4th, 1987 with the Reverend Timothy Wright, the late great uh, godfather of gospel music. And we recorded, um, the Hallelujah's Highest Praise album. And um, after that, the rest is history. We recorded uh, right after that, our uh, live in Toronto uh, album, uh, the Western New York Seminar Mass Choir with uh, James Moore and Jeffrey LaValle. And, um, and then I did Broken Pieces uh, after that. And we, uh, recorded uh, with a couple other labels uh, after that, uh, Word Records, uh, the Peppercoat Records, I did Power in the Blood. And uh, after we, we did that, we went back independent um, with Central South, and um, God has been blessing us every, every, every since. And so uh, we just released uh, back in November a, a single. I am now residing in the Phoenix, Arizona area. God has blessed my wife and my two daughters for us to be here about 20 years. And so uh, we actually came uh, around 2005. And so uh, we, we're still working with uh, recording artists. Um, and I, I formed a group here called Next Level. 
and we did a recording with, with them as a single that just got released uh, November 12th, 2021. So we, we're still alive and still, still kicking a little a bit, but uh, we're just great, grateful to God for, for being here. So many of our uh, brothers and sisters, as you well know, has, has gone on. And um, we just re released, um, I would say, last March, um, our Live in Toronto selection with Douglas Miller. Doug and I had wanted to um, re release the song, Tell Us Goodness. And it's available now on uh, our digital platform. And it got released like two months after Doug passed away. So uh, we were sorry for his passing, but that song, uh, it took off last, last year uh, as well. So uh, Tell Us Goodness with Lighthouse Choir featuring Douglas Miller is available as well. Well, man, that's a lot. <laughs> Praise God, man. I tell you, you, you summed that history up uh, really great. Uh, certainly, we remember Lighthouse, man. Power, powerful choir. Oh, yes. man. <laughs> yes, sir. And we were singing everything on there in Detroit. I'm telling you. Just mm -hmm. adopt the songs. Mm -hmm. and, and the group that, that you did the single with is called Next Level. Yes, sir. Um, N E X T level, right here in Phoenix. Yeah. So is is that a full choir or just a group ensemble? It's it's a a group and ensemble. I would say that there's about nineteen about nineteen singers uh, that uh, that we put together, and um, they came right right from the city of of, of Phoenix. Okay, okay. Well, listen, uh, I'm going to try to set set that song up, um, the lead singer, and um, we're going to try to give them a little sample of that. I was able to pull it up. Hopefully, this will work without any problems. Uh, play a little bit of that, that soundtrack. Sure being good to me. Set that song up for us. Uh, uh, who's, who, you did the entire arrangement, and the writers, are, just give me the information on this particular piece. Yes, sir. I did the uh, arrangement and writing uh, on this selection, and um, of, um, uh, the 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 lead singer um, is um, I think now in Detroit. Matter of fact, um, uh, Brittany Courtney, and um, the music uh, was re recorded at the First Institutional Baptist Church. And we actually did the recording right there at the church. And um, uh, Steve Washington did the engineering and, and producing. And so uh, uh, it was a uh, awesome time that we, we did it. In fact, uh, the, I never forget it. The weekend that we did it is the weekend that my sister had passed in, in Florida, but we still recorded. Uh, before I left for her funeral, and so Tribune uh, Good to me is 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 a, came to me, my my dear friend, um, to lighten up the load when uh, you feel like um, God is not with you, He's not hearing from you, and uh, it makes it made me think back of the goodness of God, where he brought us from and to the appointed point and appointed time. And so the Lord gave me the permission that should been good to me. Uh, in spite of whatever you're going through, he's, he's, he's been good. And I've got so many comments on that song, even from people that are going through their own situation, uh, letting me know that they uh, were being blessed by that, that, by that uh, single, uh, sure been good to me. So uh, we, we just released it, and it's still moving. Um, uh, in fact, I just heard from Central South the other day. So we're we're, we're blessed and happy 
of what God is doing. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna right. endeavor to play a little bit of that and share with our audience tonight. The song is "Sure Been Good to Me," Jerome Farrell and Next Level. Yeah, my my my, show sure been good to me, man. That's that's a nice that's a nice groove, huh? <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes, sir. Oh man, that that is nice. Thank you, thank you. And it's a, it sounds like a testimony song. It's it's, it's one of those with a, a a nice good sound message. All right, so let everybody know where they can get that now. 
You can get that on any of the digital stores, iTunes, Spotify, uh, YouTube, you name it. Um, all the digital stores that there's out there, uh, it is available. Uh, for uh, just going to Jerome L. Farrell, sure been good to me, and it's right there. It's only one. All <laughs> right, all right. <laughs> Oh, we thank all of you all for joining us. Oh, Vanessa Lattimore, blessings. David, David Tate, uh, my good friend, uh, Julius Dix, out of the Buffalo, uh, New York area, Rochester area. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's yeah. territory. Dr. Julius Dix, great musician uh, uh, in, that, in that area, good friend of ours. Thank you all for chiming in. Now, if you have any questions... For our guests, certainly put them in the comment section, and uh, we'll try to get your questions answered. Uh, let me pull up that so I can see them. All right. So if you if you got any questions in the comments, we certainly welcome you. Listen, man, talk to us about what you see uh, in this climate. We've been through this pandemic, but the phenomena of praise teams versus choir. I don't like to say versus, but. Uh, uh, I'm one of those guys, just just a, a choir guy, you know. Everybody right. saying, "Bring him back, bring back the choir, bring back the choir." Uh, uh, what do you think about today's uh, worship music and our churches and community choirs and all that? What, what's your take on it? Certainly, the worship music has its place, and it has its place where it has served the ministry and is serving the ministry as as we speak. Um, but uh, I, I do believe that the movement of Bring Back the Choir is, is taking a, a, a strong road on coming, on coming back. People are, the messages that I'm getting is that um, as people play our, our, old, old, our old songs, our previous recorded songs, that the choirs are not singing like that anymore today. And they miss that, and they, they miss that 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 powerful, gut-busting choir sound, and um, that blood, sweat, and tears type of thing that we always talk about. But uh, I do believe that um, uh, choir is music is is coming back, and that is why we are re-releasing some of our material that we that I did. Uh, independently um, on Diversity Music Group uh, with the Lighthouse Choir recorded live in Buffalo. My last recording with Lighthouse Choir uh, so completely out, uh, out of um, distribution, uh, out of all the albums that I recorded, Dr. Woods, um, I can say that that one I know went out of stock because it was sold out of stock. And uh, I did not know that that many people uh, realized or, or liked it until I started traveling around recording uh, other groups uh, on my label. Uh, I did the Praise 2 Choir out of Chicago, Illinois, the, the Gray Boys, uh, Percy Gray and Gerald Gray. And as I was recording them, um, I also recorded uh, the the first jurisdiction Church of God of Christ Mass Choir, uh, where Lavonia Whitney King is is from. Uh, Kenny Lockhart uh, was the minister of music, and uh, I was referred to uh, Kenny Lockhart by Lavonia, and so they called me in two weeks' time to record for their annual uh, Ames Mass Choir recording session. We did that in Chicago, and that sold completely out uh, as, as well on Gus on Diversity Music Group. So what my joy what became as well from not just recording with the Lighthouse Choir, but recording with other people and sharing our blessings and information, our talent, our uh, distribution, our know-how with other artists, other singers, 
And so we're we're working with a gentleman nine by the name of Al Bolson, um, who is currently uh, have, has his own album. I met Al Bolson. He was the drummer with Timothy Wright back in the 80s and the 70s. And now God has blessed him to, to form his own group, his own label. And uh, Al Bolson, um, he was from New York, Brooklyn, New York. Now he's he's from uh, Durham, Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, so we're working with him and getting ready to uh, perhaps record another uh, choir out of Chicago that we're in talks with. Um, and it used to be a time where, you know, we used to say, we well, don't bring those big choirs because they cost too much uh, to travel. But um, that's what I'm singing right now. I'm, 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 I'm singing, um, oh, um, what's his, his name um, in, in Chicago? Uh, Zion Movement uh, out of Chicago. They're, they're, they're doing their thing. Um, and uh, we're, we're talking with them as, as well. They, they're about 100 voices. And then, of course, I see on Facebook, I, I see our dear brother, um, Brother Kevin Lemon and Higher Calling. And they're, they're, they're being a blessing to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do believe there's a comeback for the choir. Yeah. Well, man, when you release Lighthouse again, this generation going to think it's hot off the press recorded the day before. Because I'm telling you, there's some power packed music on those recordings, man. That uh, the choirs that are coming back will be glad to have something to choose from uh, from those dynamic recordings. And man, we got to talk about that because, um, uh, uh, well, I talked to you off camera. Where there, there's some other things in the works here in the in the wonderful city of Detroit that we're yes, trying to, trying to get off the ground, uh, but Listen, man, talk to us about uh, uh, Lighthouse, because I remember uh, when you all uh, hit the charts and, and came out with that sound, I mean, on every radio station and everywhere you looked, and you were touring, and, 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 and uh, uh, that music was just available. It, it hit at the right time. Uh, your musicians, your singers, man, what did it take to put that group together? And I also want you to address, it's a twofold question, um, the recording industry now has changed so and shifted. So now we've got, you know, uh, social media and other ways to get our music, music out. And you, you spoke about the distribution and other things. Uh, I want you to answer that question and just talk a little bit about the changes and um, the upgrades and how you are, are approaching just the release of this single as opposed to what we used to do. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's gotten a little easier <laughs> than it, it did back in the day that we recorded. Um, uh, with the Lighthouse Choir, we used to have to bring the mobile trucks in, and um, in some cases, they they still do that. You know, they still bring the mobile trucks in. Now, studios have made themselves more accessible by bringing in them portable remote uh, units inside where they would get a room inside the, the building, the church, and seclude themselves and put the, the, the microphones up and uh, make sure the musicians are mic'd, uh, just like the regular old 24 multi-track recording time and uh, to make sure that they got the right sound. And that is happening, the two-fold thing. They're, 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 they're doing that and it's less cost effective. Uh, uh, it, it, does, it doesn't take, you know, the, the the seven thousand dollar budget to to do a live recording like like it like it did. Now you can make it seven thousand, ten thousand, or whatever you want to do. Uh, but for those that are looking forward to trying to do live sound again, required there there is a way to to do it. 
Um, and there, there's this just making sure that uh, uh, when we did the Lighthouse Choir, first of all, we, we, we thank God for the anointing, and but the, the anointing came with the talent that we, we had with the musicians. And they were in their uh, late teens and 20s. Uh, those young men, Eric Reed, uh, who has gone on to, to who play with uh, Martha Menenzi, uh, Noel Hall, which is now in Detroit, as I, I speak right now. And um, all those guys came through the Lighthouse Choir. Uh, Terrell Carter, uh, he's not doing gospel, but he's doing acting now. He was a uh, guest actor on Empire, and also he's doing some secular music. And um, uh, Debbie Adams, who is now Debbie uh, Pierce, Bishop uh, Pierce, from the um, uh, the three brothers uh, out of North Carolina, Brian uh, Pierce. Um, she's his wife, and she also came out of Lighthouse as one of the lead singers. So you find out some of your your lead singers. Uh, they get known, you know, from in your recordings, and God blesses them to go on. Musicians get known, and they they get the you know the opportunity to go on and advance their their music career. But uh, I I want to encourage those that uh, have a dream and a vision to record. Still follow your dreams, follow your vision. Can because you can do it. It can be done. Uh, it's easier and it's more cost effective. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, man. Great advice. Let me uh, ask you about the uh, the distribution of those that are putting out singles and independent projects. What would you advise them to do as far as their, their uh, distribution? Well, I, just, I found out that there are uh independent distribution companies that are uh, out there they're offering packages and services to independent artists uh that has at least 13 to 14 uh digital stores um to to distribute their 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 singles and, and their albums I chose to go back to Central South because uh, Central South remembered me from before. Um, all they had to do was look on the computer and they saw Jerome Fear on the Lighthouse Choir. And when I told them that I had a new release, they uh, jumped on it immediately and signed me right away uh, to the uh, Television Goodness release and sure been good to me. But um, I, Central South, I, I, I still work with them. And um, they cover the, the very wide range, the vast majority of the digital stores. So that way I don't have to worry about uh, am I covering or am I missing certain platforms. Uh, but there are some, uh, a few independent uh, stores out there, not stores, the independent companies that are willing to put you into the hands of 10 to 12, 15 different stores at the same time. You pay them a certain fee and they would distribute your picture, your music uh, on, on Spotify or YouTube. And um, I, I don't knock those stores and whatsoever. Uh, if, you, if you got $20, uh, Dr. Woods, they're, they're do it for you, you know. Uh, in my case, I uh, since yourself makes music off of me, make money off of me because I'm, I'm not paying them to do it, but they they're covering their uh, expense of, of distributing my music like sure been good to me uh, out there. But uh, nowadays, you got twenty dollars, my brother. Uh, you can sign up with these independent uh, companies. And they will get you on YouTube and um, many other platforms. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good news. 
that's 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 a uh, workshop talk where you can have a clinic and give advice uh, to these young artists out there because they're looking for the best. I've done that um, with, in, back in Buffalo. They had me come back for the Black Music Month uh, yeah. a couple years ago. And I'll be going back next year. And I did a workshop on, on the industry packaging uh, nowadays uh, than it would have took years ago, like, you know, when we, you and I first met. Um, but nowadays, I, I strongly encourage uh, people to follow their dreams, follow their hopes, uh, and get in their music out there because there is there is a way. And if they contact us, we'll be happy to help them. All right. Well, All right. we got to make sure uh, right. you provide that information how they can contact you. And I hope you all are listening, young musicians and artists and songwriters and independent artists, those of you that are contemplating your own solo project. You got you got all of this wisdom and experience right here on Spotlight on Music in the person of Jerome Farrell. He, he knows the business, so uh, he definitely can coach you and help you uh, get get where you need to be to make sure you're doing it right. Amen. Thank God for that. We appreciate that. Now, now I want you to, uh, let's let's talk about uh, the music climate uh, today and and uh, what everybody getting all up in, in arms about the awards, the Stellas, the Doves, the Grammys. But uh, I keep encouraging artists, Jerome, uh, don't get discouraged uh, if you don't get nominated for this or that or the other. There are a lot of good artists quality artists out here doing doing really good without the nominations and without uh the awards of the kind because you know even beside that uh the stellas is not big enough to give everybody that's deserving of an yeah, award to tell you the truth you know and, and the grammys they got they look categories and spots and i think that's why a lot of the our smaller uh, award programs are are catching on, you know, the different groups that are doing award show. Mm -hmm. Texas got mm -hmm. something. We yes. even got the Detroit Music Awards. They finally woke up and added a gospel category to it. It needs perfecting, but at least there they started somewhere to acknowledge that gospel music is an art form and uh, it needs to be recognized. Uh, everywhere. And so I applaud those who are uh, doing their best to give honor to uh, different artists in all these categories, producing, writing, uh, best new artists and all of what they're doing. They may not be major, but it's something to acknowledge uh, the musical uh, 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 genius of those who are out there in the trenches still. You know, still yes. trying to get their projects yes. out and heard. And I am grateful for a lot of our people who are endeavoring to start internet radio programming and getting yes. licensed and and uh, going by the FCC. And uh, so when they play our music, we can still get uh, performance royalties because they're registered you know, yes. and done all of the yes. due diligence. So I'm grateful to see that. Even though uh, I encourage people, you may not see your music in Billboard or in these other places, mm -hmm. but you're, you're gaining traction. And and mm -hmm. I think that's that's a wonderful thing. So as, as we look at this landscape of the, of the new way to do music and churches are, are getting used to uh, being live and we're finally getting back to in-person uh, worship. What What is your forecast, I would ask, for the future of gospel music as a whole? Um, there, there is a future for the gospel music uh, industry. Um, and I, I, I strongly feel that 
uh, because even where our church, you may have a small group in front of the choir, you know, to make sure they're mic well, to capture that sound. But behind them, there's a large, there's a choir behind, behind them. And um, even if you don't hear the large choir as, as good, people want to see the choir. You know, something about singing live musicians and singing uh, choir um, is, is something else. Now, obviously, we do know the artists do perform to tracks, and um, some have to for expense purposes, and um, they can't travel with the band to everywhere they have to go, so they sing with tracks, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but it's nothing, um, Bishop, nothing like seeing the, 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 the anointing at work, you know, with, 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 the, with the choir, the singers, the lead singers, the directors, um, uh, ministering uh, to the kingdom of God. And so I see, I see life uh, into um, uh, the gospel music industry uh, for, 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 for gospel music. Uh, to 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 hit on uh, what you were saying about the awards, um, we have never received an award um, nationally. I believe we were in the pre-Grammy nominee category uh, on our 1987 album with Timothy Wright, um, but uh, we never got a stellar. Uh, I've been to the stellars uh, to help just promote projects, and um, but. The, the recordings, as I told you in my previous statement, um, still got sold. It, it, got, it got sold. I, I, I may not have gotten a stellar award for it, a uh, different category uh, for different award uh, organizations, but uh, the music still got there and it still blessed people's souls. So that's the most important thing is getting it into hands and making it available to the public. That's the key word right there, making it available to the public. Once it hits, if, even if it don't hit internet radio, uh, you know, like you said, social media, uh, people are just putting these out on social media and letting people know that it's available. And people want to know how to get it, where to get it, how much it's going to be, and, um, Social media will help you also. Oh man, that's that's great. Cause I tell you, it's, it's social media. This thing is phenomenal. My God, what if we had social media when we first hit? <laughs> what? Oh my Lord! YouTube and Facebook <laughs> and all of this stuff we got now. Oh man, it it, it would be something. And and uh, well, let me ask you because. You you've done it on you've been on all sides of the music, from the production end, the, the uh, arranging end, the the musical end, the uh, uh, organizational end, the selection of the music, the whole the whole scope that has to do with uh, producing a project uh, from organizing the choir selecting the material musicians and going through all of that and then finally the final pro product and then getting it out there and then uh the pr behind it the promotions yeah. that's necessary behind it uh, uh uh give a word to our young artists and 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 young musicians and songwriters uh just a word of wisdom and uh some kind of tips to help them with their uh, uh, career? Well, one of the things, uh, Bishop, that um, I have to say there um, is something that um, I was I was talking to, um, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> one of our, um, great ministry of music, Percy Gray out of Chicago. He's also, he's the, he's the director, a multi-director of uh, New Direction. 
uh, praise to. He's yeah. also the minister yeah. for Chicago Mass Choir. Percy is behind a lot of the hit singles, hit uh, songs by Lemmy Battles out of Chicago. And um, so me and Percy share a lot because he's produced for me a lot as well. And um, the the thing that we have to be careful is that the the record promoters are the ones that are making money when you want to hire them to get your music out there. That's why social media is is so important to this very day. Um, there are no more Dan Underwoods. Now, oh, that name man. sounds familiar to you. Um, I call him Papa Dan, affectionately. Yes, sir. And um, yes, sir. those those days, he was the last of the Mohegans where he was actually traveling around the country, putting the records in the radio station's hands, making sure you got earplay. But uh, today, you have to, uh, between the internet uh, and uh, putting your music on an MP3, emailing it to a, a, a radio station, uh, possible ability to internet stations that will grab it quicker, uh, is, is available to you. Because um, I just can tell you just from experience, the, the record promoters today, they're still out there, but everybody doesn't have $500 a month to, to pay a, a person yeah. to promote yeah. one song for the next four months. That's that's $2,000, you know, and uh, that's $2,000 you can put in your own promotion or making sure your, your song got out there. They are not knocking them because they do have their play, proper place. And uh, if I was able to, to do it, I, I'll use some of them. Um, but uh, they are the ones that are, are making profits today quicker than the artists. And there's something that's wrong when the promoters are making more money than the artists are making um, because the artists created the, the, the product and uh, now you needed the PR, like you said, the PR to, to get the music out there. So uh, I encourage people to pay attention to social media, pay attention to the internet uh, to get your project, to, to get your songs played and, the, and at least heard. Um, because if it's not being heard by the radio, uh, at least get it on social media so people can see it and give a a, a tag on it. Uh, hear some of the music and and let people know that it's available to you um, for you out there in the in the public. But um, everybody still has their rightful place, I, I would say. And uh, like I said, I'm not knocking anyone or any any anybody or anything uh, that's out there working, trying to make a living. Uh, but things are a little bit more easier, like you, like you said. What mm -hmm. if we had social media the way we do now, back in the 80s, when we were out there uh, recording our first projects with Armin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is certainly uh, enlightening and um, we're excited about this information because I think a lot of artists that I'm, I'm seeing now, they get discouraged because they just, they got excited about recording and they had a little budget and they had a song and they went on and did it, you know? Yes. And now it's pressed and it's out and they got a project and some of them got some very nice projects mm -hmm. and uh, all they need now is a little fire behind them something to you know first of all that distribution they need that contact and they need that piece yes. and they need somebody who know what they're doing to help walk them through that process of getting their music heard so man this this is great information and listen you all i'm listen if you if you did catch us in the beginning uh, uh once we finish this will be up and you can go back and reference it but uh, this is the one and only Jerome L. Farrell. 
And uh, if you got any questions, you better go on and put them in the comment section. Thank you all that are chiming in. Thank you all for being here. Uh, but now I'm going to ask you, ask you, Jerome, um, uh, as as we look at the just say the church itself, um, and uh, some people before the pandemic would rely on top forty. Mm -hmm. uh, what they heard on the radio to keep their choirs up to date or whatever, and um, I always get this question, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put you I'm gonna give it to you as well. <laughs> They're always asking me, is is everything that we hear on radio or internet or all of the music that come out is it is it fit for a regular Sunday morning worship service? No, <laughs> quick answer. No, no, sir. Uh, as I said in my earlier comment, uh, you know, worship music has its place and it served its purpose as, and, and it's, it's still serving its purpose. The type of service structure that the individual church ministry have is, 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 is according to their, their, their structure. Um, and what type of service you have. If you have um, some, some ministries are uh, just really keen on worship. And so then naturally that's what you aim, aim for. Um, some is structure on uh, the, the gift of the anointing and the, 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 the power uh, structure of letting God have his way in your service. And those are the ones that um, are today, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm in my mind right now, I'm comparing two different churches that I, I, I attended. And, you know, th th there are some that are timed for time of worship very structured. Um, you only got three minutes to do this to get the song across, and you got two songs to do, you know. Now, there are those that um, services you can go to where the song gets picked up by the, by the, by the gift of the anointing, and the pastor just lets you just go ahead and, and give it to the people. And let them have let God have His way. And uh, I'm not saying that the worship services are not anointed. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Please don't don't get me wrong. Um, but there, there's the, the different types of services is according to your structure of your ministry. That I would say, Bishop, uh, for the type of style of music that you want to serve your your uh, your, your membership. Yeah, that, 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 that's great. Well, let me ask this question. Uh, a lot of people have complained in some churches, some areas, while the church is trying to be relevant and uh, as they minister to this modern day uh, culture, as they say, uh, have we have we gone too far with choreography and and um, our attire when it comes to a church that's got to be before the public. I mean, are, 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 are we kind of too far to the left or I guess depends on the, the people, the church or wherever, but there are those who are of the opinion that some of it's okay as long as they don't go too far uh, with the gyrations and the movement and and the choreography with singing, just sing. You don't take all of those theatrics and dramatizations as some of them have. Because I've seen them go real way out there, some of them. And then in yeah. my opinion, I've said to folks uh, that asked me about some things, I've been to musicals where I couldn't hear the choir for looking at them because of their attire was, you know, questionable, you know, uh, uh, for church. I mean, you know, 
And I'm telling people all the time, you know, especially on Sundays, you're only going to be there for a certain amount of limited time. And, I mean, there, there, there ought to be a reverence for, for, for the house of God and for God and, and a self-respect to the degree that you're very careful in, in your attire, you know, be respectable and got to be something acceptable. What's your, what's your thought on that? What you said is so important. Um, while you were talking, my mind went back to, I was at a awards ceremony here in Phoenix. And uh, the young lady that was singing, she was representing a song by Shirley Caesar, Evangelist Shirley Caesar. And just about anything Shirley Caesar did came out live or came out live performance, that is, uh, hits, you know. Uh, but because the attire of what this young lady wore took away from the song, and it was too revealing, I can put it that way, too, re too revealing, and the message of the song was taken and stolen away, and she was singing out of her soul. She's one of the best singers in the city. And she did not get over at all because of her attire of being revealed, revealing. And people were too afraid to stand up because they didn't know what they were gonna see. So what you're saying is true. It's, it's, it's a difference in praise worship dancers, you know? They have their place in church uh, and services, mm -hmm. and um, those those uh, worship uh, dancers and worship leaders um, have a rightful place, and um, some of them are, are really anointed as as well. Mm -hmm. And but mm -hmm. even they have to make sure that their attire is you know not too tight, not too short, not too revealing. So when they lift their legs up or lift their hands up, not lifting it, not lifting everything up, you know. Yeah. But um, as you said, um, there, there were some that uh, are, are, are too revealing, and they took um, the actions and their their choreography took away from the, the ministry. So I guess it's according to your liking, your location and your place, because some people are trying to attract young people and they're trying different things in different ways and different styles. And they're, th they're those that really, really want to minister to the people, to the kingdom of God. And so they will have, you know, some worshiper dancers to come and choreograph some steps and movement. And that's, that's fine. It has its rightful place as well but we have to ever be so careful um that we will, we don't want to take away from the message that um we're trying to get across the number one question that you have to remain in your heart and your mind and your soul is what is your purpose what do you want people to take away tonight from your ministry when you get through singing your song, when you walk off that stage, when people walk out of that church or that auditorium, what do you want them to remember? Your dance or the word of God? Mm. Man, that's, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. The, the other thing I want to pose to you is a question. Uh, when we go to court, we have to stand when the judge comes in and be seated. And anybody, especially the men, if they're wearing a hat, they got to remove their hat while they're in court. Now, in our churches, the drummers, they got on their baseball caps or their caps. And, 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 and I mean, even on doing worship, the, the musician, everybody, you know, they just creating a new fad. I mean, I had a problem with the Timberlands and the toe out jeans and the t-shirts. Now they done started something else. But 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 here's where I have the problem. A lot of these fads uh, are started by 
noted artists who who are on the stellars, who got the spotlight, who have the privilege to set uh, the example. But 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 in your opinion, is the world influencing the church? I'm talking about the music. Or are, are we still powerful enough to influence the world? We're still powerful enough to influence the world. Uh, Bishop, one of the things that I can, I can say, and I would encourage those that uh, have been doing this for a while, is don't lose your identity. You know, even though I did... Uh, sure been good to me, and people know me from doing live gospel gut-wrenching uh, songs. Um, but don't, I want to make sure the message was still being come across, coming across when I did Sure been good to me. Um, it's important for you not to lose your identity. And I, I think that that is Cleveland found out I think the Shorty Caesars found out uh, there were delayed transitions. I, I, I remember hearing Reverend Cleveland say that when he went from live to studio, doing a lot of studio projects, uh, his popularity of his music decreased because he was listening to young musicians, he said. And uh, people wanted to hear Reverend Cleveland say, Mm -hmm. and minister his songs to the, to the people. And um, same thing with Shirley Caesar. Um, um, she, she can still do studio and, and, and get over, but it's nothing like uh, back in the day when Shirley Caesar used to record with the Institutional Radio Choir. I don't know, I'm telling my age back there, but um, back in the day when she recorded with Institutional Radio Choir, the, people think that uh, Shirley Caesar and the Thompson Community Singers came together for the first time when she did the Shouting John song. No, 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 no. Shirley recorded with the Thompson Community Singers back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Back in the 60s. And she had choirs behind her. And um, she, her popularity gleamed again when she went back to recording with the Thompson Community Singers. And um, uh, so I, I would say, don't lose your identity. Whatever you have established uh, for, for you uh, that got you there, stay on that road and it'll take you there. Yeah. Well, you know, only thing that scares me is this new doctrine that they're coming up with that you know, come as you are, but that that's one thing, that's your heart and your soul, your condition of your life. It has nothing to do with your dress, but they're, they're making up stuff now and adding on for their convenience, following fads, you know, like wearing hats in, in worship service. Uh, so to me, it's, it's, it takes away from the sacredness of the worship and and how we individually ought to uh, present ourselves to the Lord as prescribed in the Word of God. But you know, when people start seeing numbers and start easing standards and letting them down to get people, they equate what they call success in ministry to numbers. And I just told a group of preachers. You can't you can't equate success to a crowd, you know. Right. That that don't mean you're successful because just like the churches, you can have two thousand people, and only five of them out of that two thousand really saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, and the others, exactly. the other ones, <laughs> need revival and need to go down in the water again, and yes, and sir. so I mean then those variables that you're going to always have people who are looking for convenience or looking to find a way to 
uh, do what they want to do and find excuse to do it and try to use uh, biblical principles or even the Bible, even God, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of nervous about some of their attitudes toward worship and being an authentic, uh, show enough, blood bought, Holy Ghost filled minstrel for the Lord. It's the ministry of music, not just music, but our music, because it's gospel, we're charged to keep gospel in gospel music. And that, that, that's, that, that's well, just I'll me. Give, well, yes, I, I'll give you a twofold uh, response. I, I've heard a pastor say one time, I'm um, that a prostitute don't know coming to church don't know know what to wear, but what she been wearing. So she's going to come as in the, in her garments. What do you do with that? Do you turn her around, or do you stare at her, or do do you place her in a certain category where she cannot be seen? Um, and then I um, I had a pastor here also said that like you was talking about the the hats in the sanctuary. Uh, there used to be a real keen thing with him about men wearing their hats in the church, and it's, so it's not. He was just letting us know that it doesn't bother him as such as bad as now than it did some years years ago. But I do believe in giving reverence to the, to 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 the, to the church. Yeah, um, those that the unsaved, they don't know uh, no more than if, what they uh, know when they come to your church. But once you come into the knowledge, yeah, you know, once you come into the knowledge and some teaching, you know. Um, then things should improve. Things should should change, you know. But when someone is walking in for the first time and don't mm -hmm. know the Lord, don't know your church, don't know your decor, don't know your standards, don't know your protocol, you don't expect them to come churchy because they don't know no better, you know. Right. But once you come into the knowledge of, therefore, uh, walk therein. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, and, and I think they would do better if they saw the show enough so-called already saved folk that's in the church setting an example. But but then, of course, yes, that's part of the problem, too. They're not setting no example. Oh, man, this this is this is uh, this is so enlightening. And um, uh, what I want you to do is. Let folk know if they're interested in getting this information, how they can reach you. Well, sir, they can they can email me at uh, Jerome Farrell, my my my, my name, nineteen fifty seven at gmail dot com. I even have dropped my record company's um, email address and got my own personal one that I didn't have to pay every month for. <laughs> but uh, Jerome, <laughs> Jerome Farrell, 1957, that's the year I was born, at gmail.com. Or they can contact us through uh, uh, our phone number, which is 480-246-5773. Uh, or through your program, Bishop, you know how to get hold of me. You did. Yeah, yeah, we got we got the information. Yes, sir. They can contact you, and uh, we'll be happy to, to to make contact and try to help those that are looking, striving, hoping, loving, uh, willing to work to make this thing happen uh, in their lives. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, man, this, this has been a blessing, a blessing. And I certainly appreciate you taking time out to talk with us. We've got to do this again. And um, we want everybody to know, listen, this will be on our YouTube channel, Fellowship of Music and Arts. 
We want you to go there and subscribe and uh, help a brother out. Let us know you're watching and you're paying attention. There's so many other interviews and information on that channel. And then, of course, hit the notification on our, on our page, Fellowship of Music and Arts, and follow us. Matter of fact, join us. No fee, don't cost you nothing to just become a part of the group on our Facebook uh, group page, Fellowship of Music and Arts. Man, I appreciate this, and I thank God for you sharing with us tonight. And, um, and to all of you that's been sharing in the comment section, thank God for you. Uh, my son, Roosevelt, and then uh, Eric Maurice Clark out of Chicago. You know, you, uh, Brother Clark, you've got to get with your own Pharaoh and get him in your magazine. He has a publication that he and, does. Um, he's featured me last month. All right. See there? <laughs> you already got the hookup with the hookup. That's yes, what I'm sir. talking about. Yes, Lord. Your brother Eric Maurice Clark. Yes, he's he's a good friend of mine. He, he, he featured me. There hasn't been a month that he has not featured a song of release of mine. And uh, the month of May, he did feature an article in me. So kudos off to Brother Clark. His father was the original uh, videographer of um, when we recorded Heal the Land in Chicago with uh, Percy Gray and, and, and the Praise to Choir. And oh, wow. His father, his father did the videographer. And Eric apparently was working there as, as a young man, yeah, the uh, boy with his, with his dad. And how he found me in, in Phoenix, I don't know. But he came, <laughs> he, came, he came to Phoenix and he found me somehow. <laughs> Listen, Eric is very resourceful and I appreciate it. I love his spirit. And, yes. and we're going to help whatever we can do to contribute uh, what he's doing. He's helping gospel music, promoting it. He is. So yes, uh, we thank is. God for him. Bless you, man. And thank you for sharing with us tonight. All right, uh, our time is, listen, we, 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 we've kept our brother long enough for this time, but we're going we're gonna to do it again. We'll do round two and uh, uh, catch up and continue the conversation. It's such a joy uh, to share and, and to hear that God is blessing you continually and you're doing well. I'm going to pray, and um, we're going to be gone for this time. So again, subscribe and uh, share with us. And, and while, while we're preparing to go, we're going to go out and we're going to hear a little bit more of this, this release going out. Uh, sure been good to me. So y'all get ready. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for fellowship tonight with my brother, uh, Jerome Farrell. We pray now, God, that you will continue to smile upon him and to bless him, even to the degree that whatsoever his hands touch, you will cause it to prosper. Bless his music ministry, God, and bless all that he do to encourage the people through song. Bless him, God, and this single that's just been released and all of his endeavor, all of the projects that he has his hands on now. We pray, God, that you will breathe upon it new life, even in the lighthouse a uh, new release. They're going to re-release some music, God. Bless it even now as we join our faith together in prayer. For your word declared, two shall touch and agree on anything and call upon your name. In your name it shall be done. So we thank you now for it being done in the matchless name of Jesus. Now bless him, God, whatever he stands in need of, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. Supply his need. According to your riches and glory, bless his household, he and his family, and God continue to protect them each and every day. So we thank you now for what you've done and for what you're uh, doing and what you're going to do, for we believe the latter shall be greater than the former. So we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. And I enjoyed I you. you and I appreciate you and we will do it. We will do it again real soon. Yes, yes sir. sir. I'm looking forward to it. 
All right, this is Bishop Andre Woods saying I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. We're going off. Sure been good to me. Yeah.